Asano is a boy who lost his entire family to a horrific car accident not long ago, and through this traumatic event, he was left with a deep dread that he may one day lose what he holds dear once more, causing him to develop crippling social anxiety. One day after the bell for lunchtime goes off, Asano is approached by some of his classmates who just want to hang out with him. Asano can't bring himself to accept their request, even though he really appreciates them asking, and the guys can't believe they've been turned down for the tenth time in a row. They've been in the same class as him for a month now, but they've never gotten the chance to chill with Asano. They still haven't given up on hanging out with him, but they'll just come back tomorrow and ask when he's more mentally prepared. As the guys leave, Asano's childhood friend, Hutsumi, comes up to him and places a bento box on his head. She scolds Asano for turning down an invitation like that when he's got literally no friends aside from her. Asano doesn't see a problem with his behavior, so Mutsumi moves on and says she made lunch for the two of them to share. She knows he hasn't been eating properly since he has to work so much, so this is a non-negotiable meal. Asano eventually gives in to Mutsumi's demands, and as they sit down, Mutsumi talks about how she is worried that Asano might stay friendless for the rest of his life. But it's not like she's much better than him since she rejects every guy that comes up to her almost instantly as well. She doesn't deny it, but she seizes the opportunity to tease Asano for worrying about her so much. But moving on, she really wants him to learn to socialize again, so he can live a normal life like his parents would have wanted him to. However, he doesn't understand how her feeding him is going to help him socialize more. The simple answer is that it won't, but she wants to do it anyway, so Asano just goes along with it, yet, as the food approaches his mouth, it is intercepted by Mr. Harukawe. The dude literally came out of nowhere, so Asano is trying to figure out why he's here in the first place, and Mutsumi questions him about the business trip he was meant to be on right now. Harukawa says he missed her so much that he changed the schedule of his trip so he could come home earlier. He also says something about wanting to rub her hair against his cheeks, not specifying which cheeks though, and Mutsumi is really close to reporting him for inappropriate behavior if he continues. Before he goes, Hirokawa turns to Asano and tells him to head to his office after school is over today because he has a very special private lesson to give him. But he neglects to explain further and Mutsumi seems worried about it. At the end of the school day, Asano's classmates wave goodbye to him, and as they leave, Asano feels dejected because he actually does want to have friends, but ever since the accident, he has been afraid to connect with other people again. He makes it to Hirokawa's office, where Hirokawa has been eagerly awaiting his arrival. And now that he is here, they both take a seat on the black couch, suspiciously close to one another. The awkwardness is killing Asano, so he asks Hirokawa why he was called here, so Hirokawa answers that he just wanted to share some photos from his special homework folder with him. His saying that is weird enough, but what makes it even worse is that all the pictures are of Mutsumi. Asano is now sure that Hirokawa is a lost cause, so for the safety of his only friend, he is going to have to report him to the police later. Hirokawa continues showing Asano of his pictures of Mutsumi, but now, they are getting younger. He has ones of her when she was 7 and 5 and even some from her third birthday party. But that begs the question, how did he get those photos if he is just a teacher at the school? Things take a dark turn as Hirokawa states that he has been watching Mutsumi for a long time now, and one thing he can't stand is undesirables trying to get close to her. Which is why he had to have a nice little chat with the last guy who asked her out on a date. Asano is scared out of his mind right now since he's now Hirokawa's next victim. Hirokawa has been ignoring him because he and Mutsumi are childhood friends, but the situation has changed so he needs Asano gone now. Asano can't muster the strength to fight back or run away because his legs are frozen in fear. However, before Asano can become a missing person, a girl dressed in white jumps into the room and flashbacks the whole place. Luckily, Hirokawa has a natural resistance to flashbangs since his eyes are always closed, but he still got distracted enough for the girl to snatch Asano away and take him to safety. Asano later wakes up to Mutsumi who is glad he's okay, but then he looks around some more and realizes that he is surrounded by a bunch of weirdos, so he freaks out over it and tries to get away. He asks Mutsumi who all these strange people are, and it's kind of a long story, but they are basically her siblings. She introduces them all to him as Futaba, Shinzo, Shin, Kengo, and Nano, and their guard dog Goliath. She also tells him that they are a family of spies and it feels so good to finally come clean about it, after keeping it secret for over 10 years. Asano still can't wrap his head around it all since for the longest time he had thought they were just vegetable grocers. But instead of eggplants and radishes, they deal with guns, intel, and narcotics. 
He thinks this must all be some elaborate prank, so the guns must be fake and to test it out, he tries firing one, but it actually goes off. Futaba explains to him that being a spy isn't really all that strange anymore. With the current economy, you gotta do what you gotta do to make ends meet. But times are tough with all the cheap public servant spies popping up, so their only edge on the market is their 4.8 star reviews. They'd also got their big brother Kyuchiro, who gives them quite the popularity boost, but he also generates an equal amount of hate. Asano recognizes their brother as Kurukawa from school, and Futaba confirms that it is actually him. He has his flaws, but as far as skills go, he is by far the best in the family at spy work. Asano asks why Kyuchiro would try to kill him all of a sudden, so Futaba informs him that they got a tip that someone may try to assassinate Mutsumi. He knows he would never do something like that, and Futaba is inclined to believe him since their tip did only come from social media. But Kyuchiro has been obsessed with Mutsumi ever since he nearly caused her to die, so due to his sense of guilt, he would do everything within his power to protect Mutsumi, even if that means keeping her away from all other people. He never liked Asano, but since he is childhood friends with Mutsumi, Kyuchiro always gave him a pass to hang out with her. But now he has a reason to justify getting rid of him, so he won't stop until Asano is gone. Futaba apologizes to him for her brother's obsessive behavior, but speaking of him, an alarm goes off which tells them that he is here. He probably intends to finish off Asano now, but they all assure him that he is safe with them. They've locked all the entrances and set all the traps they have on hand, but even with the 5 on 1, they only have a win rate of about 30% when they fought him in the past. However, the only way she can guarantee that Asano survives for sure is if he marries Mutsuni, because there's a rule that prevents any killing among family members. Kyuchiro will still probably hate him, but you won't be able to kill him at least. All he needs to do to officially be married to her is to exchange rings, so it's not a bad idea as far as Futaba is concerned. Asano isn't opposed to the idea of being married to Mutsumi, but the thought of having another family triggers his fear of losing it all, so he remains silent. Mutsumi speaks up and says she refuses to get married to Asano, not because she doesn't want to, but rather because she knows how hard it is for him to form new connections, so she doesn't want to force him to join a family. Futaba understands and apologizes for being so inconsiderate, but that means they're going to have to go with the 30% win rate plan, and while they are trying to come up with a strategy, Kyuchiro shows up on the couch without any of them noticing. They are all shocked that he made it past all the traps that were set, but he at least praises Shinzo for doing a good job with them since it was annoying for him to deal with. Since it has come to this, Futaba gets in front of Kyuchiro and warns him to stay away from Asano, but he's still dead set on killing him since he considers him a threat to Mutsumi's safety, and all threats must be eliminated. If she disagrees with his methods, then she's going to have to stop him by force, and that's exactly what she plans to do as she grabs his tie and begins spinning him around. Futaba then slams him down into a chair and calls for the others to join in, so Shinzo uses his robot arms and Nanao uses steroids. While they keep Kyuchiro busy, the rest of them try to get Asano and Mutsumi to safety, but their attack fails to do any real damage to him since he blocks it all with his wires. Kyuchiro then proceeds to slice up everything in the surrounding area, forcing Nanao and Shinzo to jump back. The weapon he is using is one specially made for him called Steel Spider, and he is quite skilled with it. So Futaba tells Mutsumi to take Asano and run for the hills because she doesn't know how long she can hold him off. She charges at Kia with her bare hands, and she seems to be doing something special to get through his wire attacks. But in the end, it isn't enough as she gets tied up and hung from the roof of the house. She and tells Kengo to get Asano and Mutsumi out of here, while she holds him off instead. But there's no chance she manages to take Kiyo down when Futaba failed so easily. She activates all of her killer drones at once and they all open fire on Kiyo at once, but she must have programmed them with Stormtrooper aim because those things haven't hit him once. Back with Asano and the others, he asks if the one who stayed back to fight Kiyo are going to be alright, so Mutsumi assures him that they'll be fine. They may get a few broken bones, but Kiyo isn't allowed to kill any family members. That aside, they need to find somewhere to hide Asano, so they open up a hidden safe behind a painting and get Asano to step inside, and before locking him in, she reassures him that she won't leave him no matter what. After Kiyo is done taking care of the others, he corners Mutsumi and who he believes to be Asano. He asks Mutsumi to get away from Asano so she doesn't get stained by his blood after he kills him, so she starts approaching him, but then she draws a gun and attacks, prompting Kiyo to restrain her. 
He realizes that this isn't actually Mutsumi, but he's got to say that he's impressed with how much detail Tango put into his disguise. It was perfect enough to fool him for a moment, right down to the number of eyelashes. However, his skills at disguising other people still need some work because he can tell that that isn't Asano over there. Mutsumi takes off her disguise and asks Kyo to please not kill Asano because she is certain that he isn't trying to kill her. Kido finally relents and says he won't try to kill Asano anymore, but in exchange, she's going to have to accept that he won't let her leave the house anymore. He believes he has been doing a half-assed job at keeping her safe, so from now on, he'll always keep her by his side and make sure that she doesn't get put in danger by all those pesky risks like school or romance or fun. He's willing to risk his life for her, and stabs himself with the knife she had in her hand to prove that to her. So all he wants is for her to give up everything she enjoys doing so that he can keep her safe forever. Mutsumi is willing to resign herself to a joyless life under her brother's control if it means that Asano won't have to die, but Asano is not okay with this. He steps out of his hiding spot and tells Kyo to let go of Mutsumi, but Kyo has lost all interest in Asano, murderous or otherwise, so he just tells him to leave and stay out of his family business. Asano understands that Kyo doesn't want to lose his precious sister again, but the way he's going about doing that is totally wrong, so he tells Mutsumi that he's willing to marry her after all. Mutsumi smiles and throws the second half of her ring to Asano, but as he is reaching for it mid-air, Kyo catches it with his wires. There's no way he would allow Asano to go through with his plan and go swooping in on his family's business, but Asano has a large debt to pay back to Mutsumi for always taking care of a nervous wreck like him, so he uses sheer willpower to break through the threads and grab the ring. After recovering from the beating Kyo gave them, the others rush in to check on the situation and they find Asano just as he puts on the ring and officially becomes a member of the family. Everyone welcomes him with open arms, all except Kyo who's still standing over there in shock. Futaba walks up to him and tells him he lost this round, but this is no time to be upset since he's still about to teach Asano a lot of things so that he can actually protect Mutsumi when needed. His last name is now Yozakura, so everyone calls him by his first name Taiyo. After that eventful evening, Taiyo was ready to go home and go to sleep. Mutsubi asks if he'll be alright heading home by himself, but he says he'll be fine. However, he's a bit worried about what happened to Kyo since he's lost all the color in his body, but Futaba reassures him that he's fine, he's just having a hard time accepting that he lost his sister to him. As Taiyo gets home, he is still having a hard time believing what happened, but since he is exhausted, he passes out on the bed. But by the time he wakes up, he sees Kyo standing over his bed with a knife ready to stab him. Taiyo manages to dodge on reflex alone, so Kyo commends him for that, but that still doesn't answer the question of why he is in his room so early or why he has a knife with him. Kido doesn't see the issue and just says he is here to give Taiyo the traditional Yuzakura family wake-up call, but morning calls usually aren't so lethal. Kyo defends himself by saying a spy must always be prepared to handle a threat, so he is actually teaching Taiyo how to be more vigilant, but this next part, this is purely for revenge. Downstairs, Mutsumi is enjoying her time making a bento box for Taiyo, so when she hears Taiyo's voice, she heads upstairs to greet him but finds him being puppeted around by Kyo. Mutsumi asks what's going on here, so Kyo says he's just having some morning exercise with Taiyo, however, she doesn't appreciate what Kyo is doing so he takes the hint and backs off for now. But then he looks at his watch and tells the two that they don't have much time left, so that he grabs Mutsumi and drags Taiyo out the window of the second floor, just before the building explodes. Taiyo has a lot of questions about why his house just went boom, but Kyo says he'll explain everything later. For now, he's putting his feud with Taiyo on hold and lets him know about the most important mission of the Yozakura family. Protecting the Mutsumi Yozakura at all costs. He suggests they leave because the explosion surely attracted a lot of attention, and as he walks away, Mutsumi calls for Taiyo to come along. In the limo, Kyo gets off a call of Shinzo who has already analyzed the explosion site and informs them that a bomb was planted in the kitchen. Taiyo has no clue why there would be a bomb in his house if Kyo wasn't the one who planted it, but it's likely because the target was Mutsumi. Information in the spy business spreads like wildfire, especially when a certain someone goes on social media to rant about losing his sister to a boy, but Taiyo still doesn't know the reason Mutsumi is being targeted. Kyo informs him that it's because she is the tenth head of the Yozakura family. The Yozakura family lineage can be traced back to the Edo period with ninjas. Over the decades, the family has produced various members, all with superhuman abilities. But there is always one ordinary person born into the family called the Head. And though the Head may not have any superhuman abilities themselves, their children will always be raised to possess the abilities of the Yozakura gene pool without fail. 
So the superhuman family protects the head, and the head gives birth to the next generation of Yozakura superhumans. But as her siblings, they don't really care about keeping the bloodline pure or anything, and they just want to let her live her own life as she pleases. However, Mutsumi retorts that all her siblings are risking their lives to protect her, so she must also fulfill her role as the family head. Kido is left in tears over how honorable his sister's sense of duty is, but he can't handle the fact that she's married to a stooge like Taiyo. His personal frustration aside, Kido further explains that Mutsumi will eventually have to make her debut as the head of the Yozakura family, but before then, her mission is to gather as much knowledge about the ordinary world as possible, which also means she is inevitably going to be exposed to all manners of villains who wish to destroy the Yozakura family. Like right now, for instance, as a black van tailing and fires an RPG at them, but the limo drifts out of the way. Inside, Taiyo starts panicking and asks what's going on, but immediately after, the men in black all pull out their assault rifles and begin firing at the limo. Taiyo freaks out again, but the others are pretty calm about it since they're used to this kind of thing. Plus, the car is completely bulletproof, so they aren't in much danger. Kyo snaps his finger and the car's souped-up engine goes into overdrive to outpace the attackers. All the drifting and dodging explosives is making for a really bumpy ride, so Kyo asks if the driver could drive a little smoother so he doesn't spill his tea. However, the driver turns out to be a family dog, Goliath, so Tayo starts freaking out even more than before. Goliath is forced to hit another sick drift to avoid an RPG, but that causes Mutsumi to bump into Tayo, and right then and there, Kyo decided this chase had gone on for long enough. He jumps up on top of the roof and the attackers recognize him, but the leader just tells them to fire despite his reputation. Once he is done, Kyo gets back into the car and once again emphasizes that the mission of the Yozakura family is to keep Mutsumi safe from danger at all times. And that applies to Taiyo as well since he is now part of the family as well. He now has a duty to protect Mutsumi, so to help him accomplish that, Kido is going to drill the basics of being a spy into him. He pulls out a gun from his jacket and tells Taiyo that his first mission is going to involve keeping Mutsumi safe from all the assassins that will be coming after her today. Later, they arrive at school like normal and Mutsumi greets her classmates as usual, but Asano rushes in after her and begins frantically checking every inch of the room for anything that could be a threat. The others think he's acting stranger than usual today, so they ask Mutsumi if anything happened to him recently, and a lot certainly has, but she can't tell them that. The guys who want to be Taiyo's friend come up to him to see how he's doing, but Taiyo isn't in much of a talking mood right now. Before they left the limo, Taiyo was hesitant to take the gun. So Kyo assured him that even if he ended up killing someone, that the family would just sweep it under the rug, so there's nothing to worry about, but Taiyo still declines. Mutsumi speaks up for him and tells Kyo that it's not very funny to off Taiyo a gun, making him think she understands him. But what she really meant is that assassins usually try to use poison or explosives so a gun wouldn't be of much use to him. Kyo admits she is right, but having a gun will still give Taiyo some peace of mind. His mission will be to defend Mutsumi from a reputable bomber named Tamea. The bombs this guy makes are first-rate, and Kiyo has even worked together with him once before to stop a terrorist group. But just because they know each other doesn't mean there's any amount of loyalty between them. Spies can switch up on each other at a moment's notice for any reason at all, so you can never really trust anyone. That aside, Tamea has one major flaw in that he is addicted to social media, so he ends up posting about his later jobs and targets on there. Kiyo would have liked to tag along with Taiyo, but he's got hostages to rescue so he leaves him with a warning. He can't let his guard down at all when Tamea is on the loose because that guy is notoriously twisted when it comes to getting his jobs done. He usually starts with lighter bombs to get your guard down, then he hits you with the specialty ones that he is proud of and those ones pack a punch. Back in class, Tayo has checked the whole classroom, but he hasn't found anything resembling a bomb yet. However, that doesn't mean Mitsumi is safe because the attacker may have already infiltrated the school, so he can't leave her side no matter what. Just then, Taiyo gets an update on Tamea's page that they have planted the second bomb already, so he's now panicking because he has to search the entire school to find it before it blows up. He notices a suspicious person up in the building. He rushes over to check it out, but just as he is about to enter the infirmary to search for the bomb, he gets caught off guard by the nurse who asks if he needs anything. Taiyo gets nervous and just says he's fine before walking away, but as he does, the nurse smiles menacingly. But once he turns back, she has somehow vanished and we see a note on the door saying the actual nurse isn't here right now. Back in class, Mutsumi is having lunch with her friends and they are all talking about how there are rumors going around school involving sightings of UFOs as well as a giant 3 meter tall guy. And aliens that can mimic other people's appearances perfectly. As you may have already guessed, these are Mutsumi's family members who are snooping around the school for her safety. But she's not going to mention that to her friends. 
Meanwhile, Taiyo doesn't know what to do anymore since Tomeo's social media says they have planted the last bomb as well, but he still hasn't found the second one. He takes a break to look over at Mutsumi, and now that he thinks about it, after watching her all day, he notices that she never eats food right away when she's given some, and she makes sure she's never alone so she's not an easy target. She looks cheerful all the time, but she's always cautious of her own safety. Just then, Taiyo's friends approach him to give him a chocolate, but they are shocked when Taiyo just accepts the chocolate, because normally, he would have nearly fainted the second they mentioned his name. Taiyo was so preoccupied with Mutsumi that he had completely forgotten he had crippling social anxiety, but it kicks back in almost immediately. They think about taking him to the infirmary for treatment, but one of the guys mentions that the nurse isn't here today, so they call for the next best person, Mutsumi. Taiyo wakes up in Kyo's office a while later with Mutsumi looking over him. She asks if he is alright and Taiyo is fine, but he asks her if she is really sure she wants to be married to a guy like him. They are childhood friends, but he knows almost nothing about her. He never knew about her family or her position as the head, or the fact that she was in danger and through all that, she still decided to stay by his side when he needed her. Mitsui chops in on the head for being too negative about the whole thing. Besides, she thinks Taiyo got the worst end of the deal here since he has been married into a crazy family of spies and his wife could be killed at any moment. Anyone who would normally agree to an arrangement like that would be way too crazy to even consider as a husband. But she has always wished for Taiyo to be her husband one day, so she's incredibly happy that he married her. Taiyo was about to say something, but then he notices a bomb planted in the ceiling and seconds later it goes off. Taiyo managed to get her to safety before the bomb went off, but he doesn't understand how Tamea could possibly have known they were going to be here. They just happened to come to this office, but that's when he realizes that Tamea has been playing the long game this whole time. He has been using Taiyo's movements to target Mutsumi without him knowing that makes Taiyo realize that he may be used to target her again. So he starts unbuttoning his shirt so he can check something. And his suspicion is confirmed as he finds a bomb stuck to his shirt, which must have been placed there during gym class. Tamea probably kept posting about the bombs to make sure Taiyo stayed within range of Mutsumi trying to protect her. Taiyo is a lot of things, but he's not about to let himself become the bomb that kills Mutsumi. So since the exit is blocked, he eats himself out of the hole in the wall to save Mutsubi from the explosion. Luckily, before he could die a fiery death, Taiyo is saved by Kyo who just got back from finishing up his mission. He applauds Taiyo's quick thinking and realizing Tamaya has planted the bomb on him. It may be small, but it packs a major punch to it. However, it has one fatal flaw in its design since it is so simple that a well-placed wire is able to cut off its detonation. After the worst of the danger is over, they sit back down and Taiyo asks what they should do with the bomb since it's still active. The only sensible thing to do would be to return it to its owner, and it just so happened that some other family members have found him already. They all heard it was Taiyo's first mission, so they all wanted to help him out. Kiyo then proceeds to tie up Tamea who begs for mercy, but there is no mercy to be given. He gets flown hundreds of feet into the air and once Kiyo retracts the wire that was keeping the explosive from going off, Tamea dies a fiery death. But before he went out, he still had to make one final post on social media saying hashtag, about to die now. But now that that's taken care of, there's still the issue of Taiyo currently being homeless since his house got blown up, so Mutsumi decides it would be great for him to come live in the Yazakura house. Kiyo is obviously against it, but Taiyo is her husband after all, so he has no right to refuse letting him stay here. However, that doesn't stop him from making threats on his life. This was the end of episode 2. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.